PoePolitikin.com. You are now politicking with Poe on PoePolitikin.com. I don't know how y'all see it, but when it comes to the children, Wu-Tang is for the children. We teach the children. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is Isaac Aikmo Williams, man, from the courts to the streets. I'm on Pope Politic, and man, y'all check my boy out, man. He's showing real love out here. Peace. Welcome back to PopePolitikin.com, your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Make sure you download our app on iTunes and Android. Now, Politic and my homie, he's the author of From the Streets to the Court, my homie Ike Williams. How you doing, bro? Man, I'm doing all right, man. How you doing? I'm good. Your name, your nickname's Ike Mo. Ike Mo. How you get that nickname? Man, I don't even know, man. Uh, it kind of stuck with me as a kid. All right. So what, yeah. speaking of a kid, what's your hometown? Where you from? Man, I'm from East Dallas, Texas, man. You know, in Dallas, Texas, man, the east side of Dallas. All right. And then, I was, like you said, your book's name, From the Court to the Streets. So I want you to talk about your background as a basketball player because, you know, I think it was before YouTube, so I couldn't find none of it. <laughs> I was looking yeah, for it. Man, you know, I should have sent you my highlight tape, man. Yeah. Actually, man, I played at 8th grade at Spruce High School, man. I graduated in 1989. I played three years at New Mexico. Actually, I played three years in high school. Uh, I was MVP of the Western Athletic Conference. Uh, I'm, I think I'm like the 25th leading scorer still in the history of the school. I let I let the school in three point percentages. First team all WAC. First team all uh, all region in the Western uh, on the West Coast in 19 in, in 1993. After that, man, I end up you know saying becoming a free agent. You know some of the Los Angeles Lakers. Then from that point, I got drafted third round in the CBA at um, uh, uh, for the Rockford Lightning. And then after that, I played in the USB in West Palm. And then I played in Caracas, Venezuela. So who did you play with with the Lakers? What, who, who was on the team then when you was playing? Well, I was, I was in rookie camp. It was Nick Van Esco, uh, Doug Christie, and who else? Dwayne Cooper. Guys like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. That was rookie camp. That was rookie camp. And you were saying you was like one of the greatest in Dallas as far as the basketball? I ain't gonna say that, bro, because I mean, you know, I was, I mean, you know, I don't really talk about myself like that, man, but, you know, it was other great players, but that's what they say, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, I, I have my own, you know what I mean? But, you know, no, no, it's other greats. I mean, it's other good, you know what I'm saying, basketball players at the time, man. You had Larry Johnson, man, Carl Wright, Skeeter Henry, uh, Stephen Headache Smith, he was at Arizona State. So, I mean, I mean, and the list goes on, Jimmy King, you see what I'm saying? So, I mean, I mean, during that time, I was one of the names that, you know, that, you know what I'm saying, that rung a bell. You know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't say I was the best player. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. And then who is somebody like, I guess, just past, present, future, anybody that kind of has a game similar to yours now, that player or that played? Man, you know, I made a mistake asking that question, man, when I interviewed with the Phoenix Suns. So, I'm going to pick me. You know what I'm saying? I ended up picking somebody else at that time. They dropped the guy over me. <laughs> 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 it was up. Yeah, but you know, uh, at this time, man, we got a similar game, man, because I pretty much took, you know, I had, I took a lot from a lot of other players as well, you know what I'm saying? But as far as what I'm looking at, were you saying like in the pros or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I don't even watch basketball, man, to be honest with you, so I couldn't tell you, but you know, I mean, as far as my game, man, you know, it was. It was more, you know, I played one and two at the time, you know what I'm saying? I could shoot it, I could I could I could penetrate. I was a big guard, I was six five at that time. That was a big guard at that time. Um, you know, I could you know, I could assist and stuff like that. I could jump, you know, I could dunk the basketball, but it was pretty much all around game. But you know, what you see right now, you know, the talent out here is really athletic, so but for us comparing somebody to me, I wouldn't I don't think I could do that because I mean, I don't really watch the game like that, but at the same time, you know, I don't you know, I don't wanna sound arrogant in that way, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, we're trying to get some raise for the interview, man. You got, you got to help me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So I was yeah. saying, so I was gonna say, all right. So we kind of covered the courts. So now we gotta go to the streets. So I guess just kind of give us the let us know about the book and how you got involved with the street life and all that. Yeah, man. Basically, man. You know, when I came back from overseas, man, I was in Venezuela, bro. And you know, it was just it was it was a turning point because I had my child young, man. I had. Had my first born, like, in, you know, in college, you know, some of junior in college. So, you know, it was just a decision I had to make, man. When I came back home, you know what I'm saying, it, 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 I had to do something. I had child support being on my door, man. I had a lot of things like that facing me, six months in jail and all that type of stuff. So I had to make a decision, so I, I ended up going back to school. But I don't want to give too much of the book away, but some things happened there. And uh, 
in the book, it shows the politics of that. And then from that point, man, you know, I had to make a decision, man. And, you know, I had to get some money. So I didn't get in the streets, man, just to get in the streets because that's what I wanted to do. I got in the streets, you know what I'm saying, to get some paper and feed my family. But that's okay, what so I, you weren't making enough playing basketball? No, nah, I mean, you know, it wasn't doing, you know, it, it's, it's once you miss that first round in the NBA, bro, it's kind of hard. And then, uh, you know, like a CBA, overseas basketball, stuff like that, you lose two or three games in a row, man, they clear the whole roster. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, I just couldn't do it that way, so I needed to set up a consistent that was going to come in on a regular basis. And at that time, you know, it was a panic button. I pushed the panic button. But, I, hey, like I say, I did what I had to do, man. You know what I'm saying? I got in the streets, and like I say, and, and, and you know, it's the grace of God that I made it to where I'm at right now. So this story is pretty much about that, man. It's just, you know, it's, 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 it's awareness and change, man, where the next athlete don't have to go through that. You know what I'm saying? You know, he can have other options, man. I had them, too. But, you know, I had to get some money, and I was used to fast money. Yeah. So that's the route I took, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not condoning it, but that route took me on a downward spiral throughout my life. And, you know, I'm just now, right now, at 46 years old, where, I'm, let me say, at 40, I started rebounding. That's when I came up with an actual 10-year plan. That's in the book as well. But, yeah, so, I mean, you know, I mean, everything switched for me, bro. You know, when I got in the streets, I got, you know, two feet in. So what were so, you, what were yeah. you, like, I guess, like, what kind of drugs was you moving? Oh, man, I, I mean, you know, I pretty much, I don't think you can cuss on here, right? Yeah, you talk however you want. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I pretty much fuck with everything, bro, you know what I mean? But crack on my thing, man, you know, I just couldn't get down with that, man, because I seen, I seen what that was doing to the people and doing to my family as well. So the green game was mine, you know what I mean? And, 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 and any type of other hustle that came with that. Now, I ain't going to step and lie to you. I moved a little raw here and there, but that still wasn't my thing. You know, I was more of a green man. You know well, how you feel about it now? It seems like now, like a lot of, well, especially out here, you know, it's a lot of legalization of marijuana, so. I don't fuck with the period, to be honest with you, because even though it's legal, you know what I'm saying, the TAC, it wasn't mentioned your mind up. You see what I'm saying? So, and I, I don't know how to do the medical weed out there, but, I mean, it is what it is. It's a chemical. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's what fucks it up. So, yeah. And then you, you, had, you went to jail, too? No, bro, you know, I missed that, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, you know, that was that was almost a possibility, but I missed it. It's the grace of God that I didn't, bro. And then I was smart enough, man, you know, when I seen the heat coming down on me and it got tight. It's in the book. And once I saw that, you know what I'm saying, that's when I made a move. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, I just can't say it was all me because it was God, you know what I'm saying, at that time having his hand over me. But like I say, I kind of walked away from the game. I never got hit in the game. You see what I'm saying? I walked away from it. And by me walking away from it, I got rid of everything. And that's when I, you know, me and Moby Dick hooked up. You know what I'm saying? Then we started doing music here in Dallas and stuff like that. So that was my hour out. You hmm. know? So speaking of that, like I'm saying, so, uh, like, I guess if you, you, saw, you watch Power? Man, you know what, bro? I'm a, I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I don't watch TV at all, bro. All I do really is, is, is do a lot of studying, bro. And try to stay on the conscious side of things. Now, 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 I heard about power. Now, so, what, what, what do you, what do you study? Man, pretty much the knowledge yourself, bro. You know what I mean? I study everything, man. From what I mean, what we want to name it: wellness, health. Uh, uh, you know, Black history. What we want to do? You know, the whole conscious move that's going on up in New York. You know, the Sarah Susan. Uh, I'm saying Sarah Susan said is the. I'm saying the Pharaohs and all that. I mean, you know, I pretty much. Well, here lately, man, I just been on entrepreneurs. You know what I'm saying? Type of thing. You see what I'm saying? Because I done started two companies now. So that's pretty much what I'm on. I'm studying you know, people like Warren Buffett, uh, 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 Mark Cuban, Damon John. You know what I'm saying? Damon Dash. You know what I'm saying? These type of brothers, man, who really inspire me. And not only that, I'm going to be 100. I study anybody with a great mind. You know, from anywhere from Pippin King to, you know what I'm saying, the Bishop Don Juan. You know what I mean? So it's just the mindset of the game that I study. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. I would say because always, you know, all the stories you always hear about, like, the drug dealers where they can't leave the game. So, I guess, how did, was you able to walk away like that? And not, Man, Because you know, most people, it. they get I the mean, big I eyes. Hot, I got hot. You know what I'm saying? I felt it. And I knew getting in the game, this ain't what I really wanted to do. It was just a, you know, I was maintaining at the time. You know what I mean? But I knew, you know, if I had guys around me who wouldn't give me that a lot of work. You see what I'm saying? For the simple fact, they didn't want to see me go that way because throughout sports, they feel like my name was too big and I would get hot quick. So, you know, it was just it was just that turning point. It was it was a feeling that I had to follow at that time, and I followed it. You know, and I pretty much gave everything up, bro, because at the same time, you know, it's only two ways out the game, man. You know what I'm saying? Dead, I mean, it's a dead end anyway, but dead in jail, as we already know. And I felt that coming. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to give too much of the book away, but... 
you know, I escaped, you know, said I escaped that three times. You see what I'm saying? Well, it's jail, yeah, but I'm talking about, you know, the other part of you know, being robbed, being killed. You know what I'm saying? It was the grace of God that he had his hands on me at that time, man, that I got away. You see, so all those things led up to me, you know what I'm saying, getting to the point where, hey, listen, I got to do something different. So that was the move, bro. And what I wanted to do out of all of that, bro, just, you know, just give back to these youngsters, man, and give them the game, man, and let them know. I got a, I got a, I got a plan B. I got a nonprofit called Unlock Minds. And I got two programs in there, one called Plan B, man, and that just setting everything up, man, for these children, man, to have some, 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 you know what I'm saying, out the sports to fall back on. You see what I'm saying? And also, I got I got another program, an ACT, SAT program. That's why I fucked up on because I didn't give a fuck at the time. I ended up going to the SAT, you know, uh, and taking that bitch half drunk, you know, just one focus. So, you know what I'm saying? You know, and that comes from the guys that I had around me as well. But, you know, I don't, I don't point no finger to nobody. That was all my fault. But, you know, I'm just putting these type of programs in, man, you know, to try to help the next youngsters not go down this road because, they, you know what I'm saying, they, they might not be as lucky as me. You see, I was blessed. Yeah, I'm saying, what advice would you give to anybody that's in the street street game right now? What would you tell them? Because at the end of the day, the streets ain't the streets no more, man. These niggas snitching. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, the code in the streets has been lost in anything. You know what I'm saying? It could be drugs, pimping, or whatever street hustle that you're doing because they're rewarding snitches now. So you can get out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you can go do this here, and then you can give somebody else. You know what I'm saying? You can get somebody up and get away with it, man. And so it's easy. There ain't no consequences to that because when I was coming up in the game, you know, if you was a snitch, man, you was dealt with. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, so that that's been lost. So the game is I mean, I mean the game is over. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, you know, if you didn't get rich out the game, man, you didn't get you no real money, get up out that shit, man, and find you something different. That's what I say. But I say, how do they get out? Mm-hmm. How you get out, man? I mean, it depends on who you are. I mean, if you move with some real work, you're an educated man. You can take that same product and put another product there and make it work for you. That's what we doing, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, this book is just like, you know. A pound of weed, you know, it, you know, uh, it's a product, how you want to look at it. So you can take that same product that you had, you know, where it's dope and you can, you know, get the right product and get behind it, push it the same way, you know, and you can make something happen for you, you know. So, but you got to be smart enough to understand that it depends on what type of guy you was in the game. Was you a worker or you a boss? You know, if you're a worker, of course, you're looking for somebody to show you how to do that. But if you're a boss, you're going to figure it out if you're smart enough. Now, you know, it depends on how you get in that paper, then you know, that's addicting too. You know what I'm saying? So you're getting money. You know what I mean? I mean, are you? I mean, what are you doing with it? What, what should you be doing with it? You know what, I'm saying? Huh? what should they be doing with it? I mean, man, really, man, that money don't get blessed, bro. I'm just gonna be one. I'm, somebody I'm was tell, one somebody was telling me before they were saying like, if you're gonna do that stuff, I was actually interviewing some other guy like this, but he was saying if you're gonna do it, I always try to like put it into something positive or something, so you so you can have a get out plan. Man, I done seen many people do that. I done seen millions of uh, uh, me and our guys in the game, man, with the same mentality. And guess what? Man, that money don't be blessed because it's the wrong money. You know, so you're getting the wrong kind of way. You see what I'm saying? All that hustle, all that time, you know what I'm saying, that you're putting on the line, that shit be gone because at the end of the day, I ain't seen nobody graduate from the game. I ain't saw it. You know, you got guys like Big Meat, you know. I mean, that, that's no disrespect to him, but look at the end result of this here. You know, that's what you got American Gangster on TV for. You see what I'm saying? It ain't no outlet, man. It ain't no win with that. You know what I'm saying? It's cool for the moment, everything. You know, that's all good. But I just don't feel like God bless that shit, bro. That's just me. What advice would you give to any aspiring um, athletes? Like, you might have somebody like a junior, senior, high school. They balling out. They think the sky's the limit. What would you tell them? What? Um, what, you know what I'm saying? For us hustling? No, oh, ba- basketball players. Because, we, you know, we got to do the courts and the streets. So, we just did the streets. Now, we got to yeah, do the courts. Yeah, I mean, so, what would you oh, say okay. to any, like... Hey, sir, bro. When you young, you ain't got the proper guidance around you, bro. You're going to get misled. You see what I'm saying? You got people out here, man. They get big money, man, for these athletes going to college, man, about directing them the wrong way. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I advise them all, bro, to have some good, you know what I'm saying, some good advisors around you. Why? Because... When you that good young, I mean, you got now you got big endorsements coming at you, man. You got Nike, Adidas, all these people, you know what I'm saying, coming at you as a as a child. So if you ain't got your mind right and the right people around you, bro, you can easily, you know what I'm you can easily be misled with that. And then when all that shit is over with, or something happened to you, these people ain't gonna fuck with you no more. And that's the bone. You see what I'm saying? You know, can you handle that fall? You know what I'm saying? So have a plan B, man. Have something else going on, man. When, before you go to college. Make sure that you know what you want to do after college. That's why I fucked up at. I didn't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? All I want to do is hoop. 
You see what I'm saying? So, and then once we got to college, that shit was already set up for us. You see, that's how they do it. You see what I'm saying? So this is what I'm. What you mean? My, in, huh? What you mean by already set up for you? I mean, school was already set up, bro. You know, I mean, our class and shit was already set up. How in the fuck is that? Because I'm sitting in class. I'm like, why are all the football and all the athletes in the same, you know, in the same class? You see, well, they got us in class that they can pass us on through. You know, oh, what I'm so saying, saying they, already, other, they already be making y'all like do no real homework man, and shit. Man, listen, to man, it's a game, bro. You know, what I'm saying. I mean, I mean, think about it. If you're playing, I mean, not even Division One. I, I mean, I'm just saying you're playing basketball. Let's say you're playing hot tech Division One basketball, bro. At New Mexico, we got a two week swing where we go to San Diego and Hawaii to play. You done missed two weeks of school. How you gonna catch up? You got 15 hours. That shit almost impossible, bro. And you know, they can put that shit on the road, talking about they're gonna tutor you and all that, man. They don't give a fuck about that, bro. You know, they're trying to get to the playbook. You see what I'm saying? Excuse me. So if you ain't got that right guidance right before you go, you gotta already know, man, what you gonna do. You gotta be fucking with that school. And that gotta be your mindset. So that's why I advise a youngster. You know what I'm saying? Get your mind on something else outside of basketball because, you know, we know the percentage of, of, of people who make it and people who don't make it. But if you ain't prepared, you're going to fuck up like I did. You're going to go get you some money. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you're blessed enough, you know what I'm saying, to live this day to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? What do you think about it? It seems like, like nowadays they, they kind of, they always thinking like, you know, you heard the song before. It's like you either playing basketball or you playing sports or it's drug, drugs or rapping. Why do you think it's like more black people? Like it's more stuff we can do, but we only always think it's, it's those yeah. options. Man, you coming out the ghetto, bro? What do you see? What you see is what you know. Mm-hmm. So if you coming out the ghetto, this motherfucker down here getting money. He riding around the vans. You see what I'm saying? And you know he ain't working. He getting money from the streets. That's the only outlet that you know. So what you exposed to pretty much is what you're gonna do. Now if you coming out of a suburban neighborhood, and you know, that's no disrespect to that. But next door might be a doctor. Next door might be an engineer. So if this all you know. This is what you're going to do. You see? Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a trap, too. It's a setup. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I got this shit on my hat. You know what I'm saying? It's a setup, bro. You know, to keep you in a slave mentality. Yeah. You see? So, yeah. I say you, uh, I know you were saying you don't watch TV, but are you in, do you keep in contact? Do you know about the Ball Brothers and the dad? Yeah. Uh-huh. I like that, man. But they, a lot of, like, I think the media don't like it. But, like, you see, like you were saying, like, He's controlling the kid. He like making sure like nobody's messing with the kids, and he like got their own shoe company for them and all that stuff. That's like, tight. Seemed like a lot of people don't like it. Like they was giving him a lot of flat because it's his own. Like he got his own shoe and clothing line, but he charged him like four hundred, five hundred dollars for the shoe. But it's, it's his own. But I heard about this guy right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, ball yeah. And all them. yeah. Yeah, I mean, anything positive, bro. I, don't, I mean, I don't care how you do it. Anything positive, my fuck's gonna hate that, bro, because. They want us to stay in a slave mentality, bro. I mean, they don't want us to think. And you got somebody thinking outside the box and trying to bring some unity together, bro. The shit is, I mean, they, they, I mean, other cultures don't like that. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, they're going to have some nigga to say about some positive shit. You know, but we need more of that, you know, and we can't get deterred with that shit because, you know, of course you're doing something positive. You're going to have more people. I mean, you know, and I, I'm, I'm just being 100 with you, man. It ain't all, you know, hey, it, it's people that look just like me and you're going to do the most hate. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? We got to see past that shit, man, and stay motivated and stay, you know, and stay to the goal and just keep it pushing, you know. But we need more positive, man, more positive shit, man. You know, I mean, all that's good, man. I mean, no matter how you do it or whatever idea you come up with, we need to get behind the support and roll with it. And then your mm-hmm. book's already out, right? Yeah, man, it came out Monday. It came out Monday. So where can they get it? Man, they can go to Amazon and get it, man, you know, from the course to the streets, but spell it instead of at the end with an S, spell it with a Z. You see what I'm saying? Or you can go to Create Space. But really, you can go to my page and go straight to the link, which is uh, facebook.com backslash Unlock Minds, U-N-L-O-C-K-E-D-M-I-N-D-Z. You see what I'm saying? Then you can go on that page right there. I mean, you can go straight to the link and purchase it, man. Then are you and gonna- get it, man, because I'm giving a lot of the proceeds of the book, man, to this nonprofit, man, and to all this other shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Actually, get this positive shit started. I got a movement called the UK Movement. And what we're working on this summer, man, is basically, man, you know, uh, taking donations, doing live remotes all, all throughout the city, man, and raising money, man, for, I'm going to start with one elementary school, which is the elementary school I grew up, that's Dumbo Elementary. And, man, we're going to try to get some school clothes, man, and backpacks and all these things for the kids and try to make that an annual thing. And, and, and you know, and start there and try to take it and let it expand throughout the city. So, so, so yeah, yeah, so proceeds 
a lot of the proceeds of that book is going to go there after the flip. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being real with you. And then are you working on an audio book version of it? An idea? What you mean by that? An audio book. Man, you know what, bro? We're going to bring the audio book out for Christmas. We're going to bring the ebook out, you know what I'm saying, this fall. Yeah, because uh, I got it set up where they can download, get a free Audible trial through the show. So whenever you come out the audio book, they can all download it and get it. Man, know, I appreciate through, that through too, Audible, man. Amazon. So yeah, just let us know. And I'll, well, I'll let you. I'm gonna send you a book, bro. I'm yeah. gonna get your address and stuff like that. I'm gonna send you a book. All right, for sure. Yeah. All right, man. So that's about it. We hit everything. Anything else you want to cover? Man, man, just go get to support that book, man. From the course to the streets, man. If you can't find it, I mean, you can go to Amazon and type it in. If you can't go to the link, unlock my. I mean. Uh, Facebook.com backslash Unlock Minds, man. Go, you know what I'm saying, support it, man. You know, and, you know what I'm saying, get behind what we're doing, man, that you can't move me, bro. It's going to be it's gonna be a good thing that we're doing in the community. It's going to expand to other things. You know what I'm saying? You know, hopefully, you know, you know, well, maybe movies or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We're just trying to take it to another level that way, too. And then at the same time, bring the hip-hop in it. You know, me and Mo were talking about some things and stuff like that as well. But I don't want to put all that out there. You know what I'm saying? But y'all support that, man. It's positive, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, as far as that, man, I just want to let you know, man, I appreciate that you taking your time out, you know, even interviewing me, bro. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I want to say thank you for coming through politics with me. It was nice talking to you, and I uh, I really appreciate, like, people, like, having a positive message out there, man. It That's seems right. like it's getting few and far between. <laughs> it is, bro, but, you know, like I say, you know, we got to pass that torch, man, you know, because, I mean, you know what I'm saying, wisdom is with that age, too. It's with that age, and we got to, those generation gaps that we lost, we got to refill them. You see what I'm saying? We got to refill them back up, man, and start taking their time out and putting this, you know what I'm saying, putting that good game back into the youth. So that's the only way it's going to happen. And then what would you like, anything you'd like to say to people that's been supporting you since the ball playing days and still supporting you now? Man, I thank you for fucking with me again, Coach. I done took them on a roller coaster, man. You know what I mean? You know, everybody, oh, you know, when the draft and shit was coming, you know, they wanted to see me there and all that shit. And then, you know, I fell out to the streets, man. You know, that shit was humiliating, man. You know what I mean? You know, where, you know, do a hood legend or whatever they want to call you, man. Then motherfucker walk by the corner store and you serve them a sack. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just appreciate the people, man, for actually just letting me do this again. You see what I'm saying? And then supporting that, man. You know what I mean? You know, so that's the beauty of the situation that they give me the opportunity, man. They feeling my pain. So I appreciate everybody, man. But I thank God first. You know, but I appreciate, man, the whole opportunity of everything, man. You know, hey, I'm grateful for it all, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't take none of it for granted, bro. Like I say, you took time out your day, man, to interview me, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, no doubt. The Poe Politicking Show is brought to you by Audible. With over 180,000 titles to choose from, Audible is great for any continuous learner wanting to grow and expand their knowledge and insight. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash PO audio and get an audio book of your choice free with a 30 day trial. After the trial, your paid membership will begin at $14.95 per month. With your membership, you will receive one credit every month. Good for an audio book on Audible. Cancel before your trial ends and you will not be charged. So go to www.audibletrial.com slash P.O. Audio and download a free book by Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Napoleon Hill, Les Brown, Damon John, and more. Always remember that knowledge is power. Thanks for listening to Popolitikin.com, a self-help meets hip-hop brand. If you are an artist or business owner wanting to be featured on Popolitikin.com, Contact us at popolitikin at gmail.com. That's P-O-P-O-L-I-T-I-C-K-I-N at gmail.com. Or text 760-717-5803. If you're a listener that enjoys the show and wants to support, you can donate to popolitikin.com via paypal.com. Please send donations to popolitikin at gmail.com. Any amount will be helpful in continuing to create quality content and shows. As always, check out popolitikin.com for past episodes. Make sure you subscribe to Popolitikin on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, Stitcher Radio, and Google Play.